Hello, I'm at London Paddington and I'm about to get on one of these new Great Western trains all the way to another country. Yes, I'm off to Wales on this Class 802 Hitachi IEP train. Now before we get on the train I want to show you this fine Victorian gentleman. His name is Isambard Kingdom Brunel and for those of you that weren't paying attention in primary school history, he is a Victorian engineer responsible for building great ships railways, bridges and other wonderful engineering marvels who we wouldn't be where we are today without some of his work. Top man! This is the 1018 to Cardiff Central, the first super off-peak train of the day. It's formed of five coaches which seems a little bit short for the amount of people trying to travel. I'll be travelling however in first class. With just enough time to get comfy, we're on our way, right on time. Nice one, Great Western. Yes, I know it's not a race, but I do love it when we overtake other trains. And for those of you that didn't know, that was an Elizabeth Line train. And this is a London Underground S-Stock train, heading out on the Hammersmith and City line. So I'm now really comfy in my seat and I'm wondering, where's the tea? We're now speeding past the place where the Heathrow Express trains are maintained. Maybe at some point in the future we'll see the High Speed 2 rail link leave here, heading up north. Ah, that's more like it. And you get a complimentary biscuit in first class with your cup of tea. A cup of tea later, we arrive into Reading, our first stop on the journey. You can also reach Reading from London's Waterloo with South Western Railway. Their trains terminate there in the bay platforms. And did you know that because Reading's fairly close to Heathrow, you can pick up a coach here, which is especially handy if you're coming up from the West Country, it means you don't have to go into the middle of London. Reading station was recently redesigned, as pretty much every train coming up from South Wales and the West Country has to pass through here. Things occasionally got very congested, but the new station allows for more platforms, more tracks, which means not so many delays. Reading is also an interchange where you can change for cross-country services that run from Bournemouth through to the Midlands and the North. There's one of those Elizabeth Line trains. TfL Rail have now started running trains from Paddington all the way through to Reading, stopping at all the small stations in between. TfL Rail have plans eventually to run right under the middle of London at places like Tottenham Court Road and Farringdon and then they also extend right out to the east of London to Shenfield and Abbey Wood. All these parked up trains here means that we're passing Reading Train Care Depot. Now this depot is also home to the second UK overnight sleeper train called the Night Riviera. It runs from Paddington all the way down to Penzance on weekday nights, hauled by a class 57 locomotive with Mark III coaches. Slowly but surely, the fizzy knitting is slowly making its way further west. Let's take a look at the first class seating on the train. This individual seat has no window, which I think is a bit of a letdown, but it does still have a small table. All first class seats are fully reclinable along with a headrest and armrest. Some have big tables and large picture windows. The USB socket and plug socket for your mobile devices is also really handy to keep your devices topped up whilst on the go. All seat reservations are displayed electronically above each individual seat. The all important safety information is displayed in the vestibule ends of each coach. Well, it wouldn't be a proper travel blog video if there wasn't a shot of the toilet. This is the accessible toilet in first class. It also has a baby changing facility inside as well. There's hot and cold water, hand soap and an automatic dryer. 
There's also a proper lock as well, which makes you feel properly secure once you're inside. There are two wheelchair spaces in first class and an additional space in standard. Each comes with a folding table and an SOS alarm. We're now approaching Swindon, a once thriving railway town. Swindon had a major railway works here, where carriages, wagons and locomotives were built. It served as the principal West England maintenance centre until it closed in 1986. As Winnie the Pooh famously once said, tut tut, it looks like rain. After a short stop at Bristol Parkway, we then head towards the Severn Tunnel, the longest railway tunnel in the UK. As it's a tunnel, there's not really anything to see on the outside, so have a shot of the inside instead. About five minutes later, we emerge into the Welsh countryside. Unfortunately, the weather's not looking much better over this side of the Severn. And guess who forgot their umbrella? We're now approaching Newport, our penultimate stop on the journey. Because it's raining so hard, I couldn't even see the famous transporter bridge on the other side of the train. So instead I got this shot of people standing on the platform in the rain waiting for their train. Newport station roof has all the properties of a really good colander. We're now on the final stretch towards Cardiff. And time for one quick last cup of tea. Welsh comedian Rod Gilbert famously says, Come to Wales, we've done it up. But before you go, do check the weather forecast, because I didn't. As the train slows for the final approach to the platform, I can't put this off any longer. I'm about to get drenched. Now that we're here in Cardiff, the plan was to find pacer trains on the local lines around Cardiff, places like Pontypridd, Barry Island and Merthyr Tydfil. But the rain was getting so heavy, all these lines became flooded and for want of a better term, knackered the entire service in and around Cardiff. So as we can't play trains, we'll go and find a weather spoons instead. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and ding the little bell. And see you again soon on the next video.